Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at an actual CPA simulation that was released by the AI CPA. Those simulations are the real deal. Why it's the real deal? Because the CPA is administered by the AI CPA. And specifically, this simulation will cover BEC. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. For example, for BEC, I have a whole course of managerial accounting, a whole course in cost accounting, a whole course in finance that applies to BEC, and I have hundreds of CPA questions that I work about BEC. On my website, you will find additional resources such as true, false, multiple choice, PowerPoint slides, notes about the BEC, and 2,000 plus CPA questions. I strongly suggest you visit my website. What I'm going to do next is pull the simulation and we'll go over the simulation together. This way, I want you to build your tolerance and your familiarity with CPA simulation. Okay, let's take a look at this simulation. Once again, the simulations are no more than multiple choice questions in a different format. There's going to be a lot of multiple choice questions, more than one, but nevertheless, it's the same topics and the same thing that you learned in the multiple choice. So the first thing you want to do is first read the simulation, read what's given real quick, just to get an idea. Now, without even reading, I can tell you, you'll need to compute the quick ratio, the total debt ratio, the times interest ratio, return on equity. But you, you want to read what, what's, what's required. So Oil Inc., a privately owned oil field services company borrowed from TH Bank in year five. The controller has asked you to calculate key matrices to determine compliance with loan covenants. And by the way, if you work in a CPA firm and you're preparing a review, most of the time, this the sole purpose of the review is to compute those matrices and to determine if, whether they are not the loan is in compliance. And when I was in practice, I did this a lot, maybe for a lot mean four to five companies on a quarterly basis. So it's a lot throughout the year. The company generated 2,050,000 in cash flow from operating in year five. Use the information included in the exhibit above. So we have some exhibits. Uh, the table below for the year ended December 31st, year five. Cal calculate the required financial matrix matrixes in the identified in column A, which I already told you we have to uh, we have to do that, and enter the associate respond rounded to two decimal spaces in column B. The information in the analytics deficient exhibit must be used for any financial ratio. So simply put, they're telling us in the exhibit, they're giving us the ratios. In column C, select the option list provided to indicate whether each of the financial matrices calculated in column B is in, is in compliance with the applicable provisions of the debt covenant and the loan and in the debt covenant and the loan covenant. Ex, ex, the, we're going to look at the exhibit. So basically, column C is basically yes or no. Are they in compliance or are they not in compliance? So the first thing look is the look at the financial statement position, aka the balance sheet. This is the balance sheet. That's fine. We're going to need this information. They're giving us a statement of operation, which is the income statement. We're going to need this. Remember, we're, we're working with year five. Uh, you, uh, guess what? They are giving you the analytics, analytics definitions. They're giving you the ratios. So you don't have to memorize anything for this problem. Now, it doesn't mean you don't have to memorize them for the multiple choice, but happen for this problem, they're giving you the ratio. So you, you need to know, you need to understand the ratio. So although they're given here, I'm not going to say that don't memorize them. I'm going to say understand them and uh, be familiar with them at least the most common ones, okay? But if you understand them, they're, they're easy. And this is the bank loan covenant, the agreement, and this is part of it. Okay, we have to read this carefully because this is, you know, what we need to do. TH Bank, the lender, is pleased to enter into a loan agreement with oil, com the company, to provide financing for investment project. Clear enough. The terms of this loan agreement are documented separately in the term sheets. The purpose for this letter is to disclose the loan covenants pursuant to the loan agreement with TH Bank. Until the commitment have expired or or been terminated and the loan principal interest and all fees payable has been paid in full, the company covenant and, and agrees as to itself and its subsidiaries with the lender that. So here are the terms of the agreement. The company will furnish the lender as soon as available in any event within 95 days after each of physical year of the company is audited financial statements, blah, 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 all the financial statements. So you have to provide financial statements 95 days after the end of the fiscal year. Usually when I was in practice, they ask you like after every quarter, most of the bank, they ask you, depending on the loan too, if the loan is too large or too small, well, yes, but they, they, need, they need those financial statements. A, 1.2, the company will not permit a quick ratio less than 1.5. The company will not 
permit a total uh, debt to debt ratio to exceed 0.8, so the debt ratio cannot exceed 0.8, the company will not permit the operating cash flow ratio calculated as the ratio of cash flow from operating to ending liabilities to be less than 0.2. So they're telling you exactly how you would need to compute this. The company will not permit the interest earned ratio calculated as the ratio of income before interest and expenses, which is EBIT, to interest expense to be less than 10. So you have to keep a times interest earned above 10. The company will not permit the return on equity to be less than 0.1. And we're going to see how we compute the return on equity. The company will not permit profit margin to be less than 0.05. And the profit margin cannot be less than five percent so we are okay we are we we are we are giving what we need to do basically now we're going to compute the quick ratio once again you don't have to remember how to compute the quick ratio but you need to know the quick ratio are the quick assets divided by current liabilities so let's take a look so here we go the quick ratio is let's see what the quick ratio is current da, 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 da. Quick ratio is quick assets, which is cash and cash equivalent, short-term marketable securities and receivable divided by current liabilities. So simply put, we have to look at the balance sheet, the statement of financial position. So we look at the statement of financial position and look, we're looking at year five. Okay, be careful because we're computing for year five. So we, we take cash and cash equivalent plus account receivable. That's it. We don't include inventory, we don't include prepaid, and we don't have short-term investments. So simply put, we are going to take cash and cash equivalent. So you pull your calculator real quick. You will take cash and cash equivalent, 2,570,000 plus 3,300,000. This is your current ratio. I'm sorry, this, those are your quick assets and divide them by current liabilities. Current liabilities is given as 5 million divided by 5,230,000. And the ratio is 1.12. So we're done with the first ratio. That's it. You are giving everything. You just have to put it together. It doesn't get any easier than this. Okay. Now 1.12 round to two decimal point except now we need to, to, to determine whether this ratio is in compliance or not and this is where the hand twisting <laughs> start uh, gets into place in the real world so there we go the quick ratio cannot be less than 1.5 uh oh we're in violation of the debt covenant okay so um, select an option no we are not in compliance we are in violation which is not good and you know what happened in the real world I'll tell you what happened because I dealt with this a lot one companies in particular, they will go back and ask you to recompete, to look into the current assets and the current liabilities. See if you have too many liabilities somewhere. But this is basically the the quick ratio. The second ratio is the debt ratio. Once again, the good thing is you don't have to um, you don't have to uh, you don't have to uh, you ha you don't have to remember it. But it's total liabilities divided by total assets. Something you have to know. Okay, so total liabilities. So since the balance sheet is open, we have we should have total liabilities. Total liabilities. Remember total liabilities. So total liabilities twenty five million eight hundred and ten divided by total asset forty five million nine hundred and thirty. I think we should we should be in good shape for this, but you don't you know in, in good shape it means we are in compliance. But let's they want the number exactly. So clear your tape, and you're gonna take. Liabilities twenty five million eight hundred and ten. I don't need the three zeros. Divided by total asset forty five million nine hundred and thirty. Oops. Divide by forty five million nine hundred and thirty, and that's going to give us point four nine. Did I do this right? Um, total liabilities. 25 million divided by total asset of 25, not 22. Okay, let's. I made a mistake. You have to be careful. 25 million 810 divided by 45 million 930. 0 0.5619, 0 0.56. 0 0.56. So 0 0.56 is the answer. Are we in compliance? Well, I think it's 0.8. So it has to be less than 0.8. I remember this. So we are in compliance. We say yes for this. Now we need to compute the times interest earned. Well, this ratio is EBIT. 
earning before interest and taxes. So we don't need the financial position divided by interest expense. So let's go back to see, see if we see if EBIT is giving. So let's look at the statement of operation. We are giving, again, you're working with year five. So you are giving uh, interest expense, you are giving taxes, you are giving net income. So simply put, EBIT is not given clearly. Uh, actually, let's see. We are giving income before taxes. Oh, right here. So this, this income here, income from operation, is income before interest expense and before taxes. So this is EBIT right there. EBIT is... EBIT, um, sorry, give me one second, please. My son just removed his, his, uh, his headphone. Uh, sorry about that. Just my son took his headsets out. Now it's back, back on. Okay, so this is EBIT, earning before interest. You're not going to see this on the CPA exam for sure, right? So this is EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes, divided by interest expense divided by interest expense and let's do this get the calculator and let's see what we have and I think we should be in good shape it's, it's gonna be more than 10 because it's more than 10 so 4 million 320 divided by 260 if you're gonna not use the zeros not use them for both so we're 16.6153 16.62 so the answer will be 16 point 16.62 and we're in good shape we are in good shape yes we are in compliance because it has to be more than 10 okay now we need to compute return on equity return on equity every time you hear the word return it's net income every time you hear the word on it means divide and every time you hear the word equity duh it's equity but you have to be very careful when you compute return on equity why because return on equity the numerator is an income statement account the denominator is a balance sheet account what does that mean it means when you when you divide an income statement account by the balance sheet account you have to be careful because the income statement is a number that represents the whole year so notice the income statement is two million seven hundred and thirty thousand but this number is generated throughout the whole year so it's for a period of time when you divide an income statement number by a balance sheet number the balance sheet number is only a point in time so let's keep this open let's get the uh, statement of financial position here let's look at total equity so total equity is 20 million for year 5 20 million 120 17 million 739 700 17 million 390 thousand for year 2 what we have to do because it's a balance sheet account we have to find the average simply put we have to find the average so first let's find the average clear your tape find the average 20 million I'm just gonna I'm not gonna use the three zeros 20 million 120 plus 17,390 that's 37,510 divide that by 2 and that's your average you want to write it down in case you know 18,755 now I'm going to take net income which is 2,730 2,730 again I'm not using the last three zeros divided by 18,755 which is the average equity and that's going to give me 14.55 you get around it 40 uh, it's going to be 15 percent i don't remember what the requirement for this but it's 0 0.1 0 0.1 0 0.15 i need to know what's the i don't i don't i didn't memorize that number so let's go back to the uh, loan covenant here and return on equity is there a requirement for that yes cannot be less than point Let's cannot be less than 0.1. We're in good shape. So we have we return on equity is 0.15. So we are in compliance here as well. Operating cash flow. Remember what they said? They said operating cash flow is cash flow from operation divided by current liabilities. And I believe cash flow from operating was given to us right here. I believe it was giving someplace clearly, not here. Uh, da -da -da -da. Oh, right here. Cash flow from operate from operation is two million and fifty thousand, and we have current liabilities. It means you know how much do we have cash flow cash flow from operating that we could cover current liabilities. Current liabilities are current liabilities. Current liabilities are um, 
total current liabilities, 5,230,000. So simply put, I'm going to take cash flow from operation, 2,050,000, divided by 5,230, which is current liabilities. And that's going to give me 0.3919, which is 0 0.39, 0 0.39, 0 0.39, which is 39. It means from our cash from operation can cover 39 uh, percent of our current liabilities and what's the requirement for this let's take a look at the requirement um, the company let's see operating cash flow cannot be cannot be less than 1.2 wow we're in trouble here right <laughs> we're in trouble here the, the the client is in trouble so yes so yes it is way less than 1.2 which is that's a lot I mean that that, that that's I mean, I believe in the real world, this is a, this is a big, a big burden to overcome. It means from cash from operation has to cover your liabilities 1.2 times. Wow, that's that's a high ratio to meet. Okay, so they're they're failing in this rate. No, they're not in compliance. They're not in compliance. They're failing here. So no, so they're not in compliance. And the last one is profit margin. It has to be. It cannot be less than 5%, 0 0.05. And profit margin is net income divided by sales. You need to know this. Uh, net income it's again it's given you don't have to memorize this but the point is you gotta know it you know if you don't know what profit margin is or net profit margin well it's the bottom line divided by the top line to determine for every dollar in sales how much do you keep in profit so let's find out I think it's it's close 2730 divided by 39,500 that's 0.69113 almost 0 .07, 0 0.07 so it's seven percent so the profit margin is 0 0.07 whoops 0 0.07 are we in compliance yes we are because it's more than 0 0.5 so simply put as you can see this this uh, this BEC simulation I consider to a great degree easy straightforward easy simulation although at the beginning it might look intimidating it might look you have so many things to look at but it boils down to ratios if you know your ratios you don't even have to know them they, they, they even they gave you just you need to know how to put them together and stay calm and don't panic and that's all what's to it I, I, again I would like to remind you on my to go to my website I have a lot of lessons exercises practices about ratios explanation subscribe you study once for your CPA exam I'm here to help you. Good luck and invest in your career.